Hi everyone, welcome to the Rugby League History Channel. Hope you're all well. Today's video is going to be another video of the Forgotten Rugby League Ground Series. Today's ground that I'm going to be featuring is Earl Park at Arncliffe, which was the home ground of St George between 1925 to 1939. The ground was named after Lancelot Earl, who was a local benefactor, and he lived on the Earl Park estate. The ground was constructed before the start of the 1925 season. St George had left Hurstville Oval at the end of 1924 because Hurstville Oval had very poor facilities and it also had a, a pretty poor pitch from what um, the report said at the time. The first match to be played at Earl Park in Arncliffe occurred on May 16th, 1925 when St George defeated Western Suburbs 6 points to 5 in front of 5,000 fans. The match was a testimonial game for Herb Gilbert, who was a, a coach and a player with St George. Other things with that which happened at the ground were in 1935, well, to be more precise, on the 11th of May 1935, St George defeated Canary Bankstown 91 points to 6, which to this day is the highest scoring match, the largest win margin, and the most points scored by a winning team. During the game as well, St George player Les Griffin set two of the records at the club, which were never broken, which were the mo most points scored in a, in a game, 36, and most goals kicked in a game, which were 15. The ground was also famously remembered for the Earl Park riot, which occurred on the 11th of August 1928, and it was a match between Belmain and St George at the ground in front of about 6,000 fans. It was a very spiteful game, which St George won 21 points to three. In the second half, the referee completely lost control of the match. It ended with St George and Belmean fans spilling onto the pitch, ripping up the fence, attacking each other, attacking um, players. A couple of Belmean and St George players had to be rushed to hospital. Um, also, the referee had to be protected. The police were called. People were hit with batons. People were handcuffed to goalposts. At the end of um, the investigation by the New South Wales Rugby League, even though the referee lost control of the game, which sparked the riot, the riot was blamed on the crowd. Apparently, one of the Bell main players that was one of the focal points of the actual riot, Tony Russell, he claimed that he... What started the riot was that he was elbowed in the face by St George player George Carsters and as a result he retaliated by kicking George Carsters in the face which broke his nose. But in an interview 40 year later Tony Russell denied that he actually kicked George Carsters in the face because he reportedly said I wouldn't have wasted the boot leather. At the end of 1938 Lancelot Earl had died and the ground had been put on the open market to both the St George Club and the New South Wales Rugby League for a sum of £5,000. No, no party was able to come up with the money at the time, so the actual Earl Park site and the ground was sold to a, a local biscuit company called Cook's Caribals, which constructed a, a biscuit factory on the site. The last ever game to be played at Earl Park in Arncliffe was on July the 8th, 1939, when St George defeated North Sydney 24 points to 17 in front of 6,000 fans. St George had a very good record at the ground. Apparently, it was a very hard place to go and play. St George played a total of 117 matches at the ground. They had 75 wins, 38 losses and 4 draws. Where Earl Park is located now, it was located in Arncliffe and it was on the junctions of Bourne Street, Wollongong Road, Martin Avenue and Bidjigal Road. Unfortunately, there's nothing um, which actually indicates that Earl Park existed or there was rugby league played there. There's no plaque by the NRL to say that this was a ground which hosted rugby league or even to say this was the site of the biggest ever win by a club in the New South Wales rugby league NRL history. What stands on the ground now is a combination of mixed businesses and a block of flats and apartments. 
So unfortunately, there's no market to talk about this this ground anymore. But Earl Park and Arncliffe is a very important ground in the history of St George, and it's a very important ground in the history of rugby league. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video today. Today I was talking about Earl Park Arncliffe, which was the home ground of St George between 1925 and 1939. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know in the comment section below. Let me know which ground you would like me to do next. Anyways, this is Ruby League History signing off. And I'll catch us all later in the next one. All right, bye now.